<laughs> well, good morning, and thank you all for joining us here today to uh, celebrate Earth Day in our own unique fashion. Um, as you know, Pinellas County is committed towards uh, working towards a sustainable environment. And we have a wealth of natural resources, which include our beaches, our coastal waters, bay streams, um, and our preserve and parklands. The educational signage installed by Tampa Bay Watch with funding support from Pinellas County is just one example of how an effective partnership can work for the betterment of our natural habitats. Approximately 100 signs are being installed throughout the Tampa Bay area to educate voters about the importance of our seagrasses as well as our manatees. We have more than 55,000 registered voters here in Pinellas County. So signs like these will really help the boaters to avoid stressed areas and to avoid our manatees. Tampa Bay Watch, as many of you all know, has been very committed towards planting seagrasses and towards making a huge difference in the uh, quality of our water. Because of their efforts and others, Tampa Bay has gained more than 1,300 acres of seagrass between 2006 and 2008 and now supports more seagrass than any time measured since the 1950s. That is truly phenomenal. We continue to spend dollars with our partners to clean up our waterways, and these efforts are truly making a difference. We have partners from all levels, from federal, state, regional, and local agencies, as well as not-for-profit organizations. Examples that we want to highlight because they've been so helpful to us are the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency because they provide us overarching authority and guidance from a national perspective. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection has worked closely with us and has provided funds in support of local governments on a myriad of projects um, and especially environmental regulatory issues from the quality of air and surface waters to buying and restoring environmental lands and to renourishing our beaches. Swift Mud has brought a regional perspective in issuing environmental permits and has provided significant funding support. Their help supports us in uh, habitat restoration, drainage and surface water quality, and many other environmental projects. The Tampa Bay Estuary Program, which is a non-regulatory agency, has been tasked with building relationships to restore and protect Tampa Bay through a watershed-wide management plan. They also provide grants as well in order to um, help us with our environmental efforts. And the not-for-profit organizations have provided environmental dedication, awareness, and passion to their mission of environmental stewardship. Tampa Bay Watch, Audubon, Sierra Club, Florida Native Plant Society, the many friends groups that we have for our parks, including Fort DeSoto Park, and many others contribute to this community-minded efforts. Together, these partners form a network with more impact than the sum of their parts to help achieve and maintain the highest quality of life for our citizens through the awareness and the protection of our very critical natural resources. And here on Earth Day, it's my pleasure now to introduce Peter Clark, who's the Executive Director of Tampa Bay Watch. Uh, it's obvious his dedication as well as his staff to the betterment of Pinellas County is well known, and we thank you, Peter. Thank you, Commissioner. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. What a great day to celebrate Earth Day. As part of the celebration, we're kicking off a public informational campaign to install a hundred signs all around Pinellas County to let people who use our wonderful bays and waterways know about the value of seagrass communities and manatee protection. Seagrasses are critical communities where we've lost about 80 percent over the last hundred years or so in Tampa Bay. Now why do we care? Seagrasses provide habitat for fish and wildlife, they improve water quality, they stabilize the bottom of the bay. These are very important communities that are very sensitive to things like pollution, water quality impacts, and also dredging and filling activities. And we've lost a tremendous amount of this habitat. And because of that, water quality has degraded over the last 50 years or more. And we've lost a lot of the resources, fish and wildlife, that depend on seagrass beds. Now, Tampa Bay is very fortunate. Over the last 30 years or more, we've been able to identify how important seagrass is 
and what it takes to restore this important community. And really, the way that seagrass grows in Tampa Bay is the way that the bay goes. If we start losing the seagrass, the bay degrades. As seagrass starts to improve, everything else starts to improve around it. And it's all, almost self-perpetuating. As seagrass has come back, water quality improves, resources start to come back. And Tampa Bay is one of the few estuaries in the country that we're able to say, because of what we've done over the last 30 years or more, seagrasses are coming back. Because seagrasses are coming back, we're able to see resources like scallops that are the miner's canary. When uh, water quality degrades, scallops blink out of existence, and we've seen that in Tampa Bay. And only now are seagrasses starting to come back. Uh, Tampa Bay Watch is able to host the Great Bay Scallop Search every year from Fort DeSoto Park to take a couple hundred community groups or individuals out on the bay to snorkel and document the recovery of scallops. So we're seeing improvements in the resources. We're seeing improvements in things like public beaches are opening up all throughout the year because water quality is good enough to support people to go in there. Uh, fisheries are returning back into the bay and it's really a wonderful place to be working on. In that Tampa Bay, we can see the improvements that uh, we've been able to do. So the public dollars that are being spent on Tampa Bay are really making a difference and we're able to document those kind of recovery. Now there's a lot of things that we all can do on the weekends or while we're recreating on the bay or even in our backyard. We need to reduce the amount of nutrients that flow in the bay. Nutrients stimulate algae blooms that shade out critical seagrass beds. If we can reduce wastewater treatment plant discharges, which we've had, been able to over the last 15 years or so, if we're able to reduce fertilizer going into the bay, things like pet waste, all of those nutrients really play a role in the health of the bay and ultimately the health of seagrass beds. We're out, while we're out in our boats, we can also reduce propeller damage to these very shallow seagrass beds. Everybody knows some of the best fishing is on top of the seagrass bed because that's where the fishery habitat is. So we all like to go out and target seagrass beds to find the fish. But unfortunately, by doing that, we're also harming those critical habitats that support the fish and wildlife. So while you're out there, wear polarized sunglasses. Make sure you know where you're going. And this is, there are charts at all the different boat ramps around to show you where the seagrass beds are and where these protective areas are as well, such as what we have here in Fort DeSoto Park. Seagrasses are a critical community to Tampa Bay. It's important that all of us play a role in protecting and restoring seagrass beds wherever we can. And it's my pleasure to be able to come out here on Earth Day and celebrate the health of our seagrass beds and the health of Tampa Bay as well. Next, I'd like to introduce Pam Leisure from Pinellas County Lands. She's going to talk a little bit about some of those resources that depend on healthy seagrass beds. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, Peter. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I just want to talk about um, how important the seagrass beds are to the manatees that frequent our waters here. And especially at Fort Soto, we have um, quite a few manatees that like to feed on these beds. The manatees, as you know, have suffered um, a very stressful winter because it was so cold and they weren't able to go out and feed quite as frequently as they typically do because we didn't have those um, warm days during the winter. So it's really important to, uh, to abide by those signs and slow down for those manatees because they're in pretty shallow waters when they're in there feeding. And enjoy yourself on the water, but just be careful and abide by the signs. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah. Explain where the ledge and that's on here. I think that's sure. Kind of interesting here. We're right here at the boat ramp, and a hundred of these signs are going all over Pinellas County, and they have specific information about the areas around those boat ramps, around the bait shops, around the, around the marinas and things like that, that tell where these shallow seagrass beds are, and also the different types of protection measures that have been established for those seagrass beds. So here at Fort DeSoto Park, we have idle speed areas, we have closed to internal combustion engines, we have swim areas and also areas that are purely education. They provide a sign that says there are shallow seagrass beds here, operate carefully. So they're not excluding people out, but they're letting them know that it's very shallow water. And then there's some also some uh, total closure areas to help protect uh, the birds and the wildlife and provide a sanctuary 
where it's not necessarily appropriate for people to go. Uh, but that's relatively small when you consider the amount of seagrass beds that are in this area and the different levels of protection. So the signage has very specific information, talks about manatees as well while you're on the top of the seagrass beds, and also some information about the Tampa Bay Watch restoration projects that uh, the community groups, student groups, youth programs can help us out to restore and protect Tampa Bay. Well, that's great. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate all that you do.